Saunas is covering the spread. Here are your hosts, Jim Saunas and Dr. Ed Feng. What's going on, everybody? Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com as we are getting you set for the College Football National Championship game. It is LSU versus Clemson. We are breaking down all the betting angles for that game with Teddy Savransky. Teddy covers. We're going to break it down with him in just a bit. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Joined here, as always, by Ed Fang. You can find his work over at thepowerrank.com and on Twitter at the Power Rank Ed. Happy National Championship Week to you. How you doing? I'm doing great. I kind of feel like maybe the game should have happened last Monday, but obviously it didn't. Uh, we get over a two-week wait between the semifinals and uh, the Monday night game. But, I mean, I think that's just in the college football rules, right? It's the second Monday after New Year's. Yeah, and, like, it's kind of weird to have the two weeks between it because I kind of – forget that it's happening like the week after i say the, the half week after the semifinals i'm like oh my gosh with this game we're today and then there's like a week after right. that where you're like uh okay uh, i kind of forgot that this thing happened and now Got i'm like oh, okay now i'm getting jacked up again because it's wednesday we're leading into monday finally yep. i'm getting excited but i still have to wait until monday which is kind of you know it, it's whatever but i think the allure of this game and i i am more of an nfl person than a college person but I think watching this game specifically, where it's Joe Burrow versus Trevor Lawrence, gets me as excited as I've been for a national championship, and I would say quite some time, just because both these dudes are going to be relevant in our sports-watching universe for a very long time. So I'm, I'm jacked to see how this game plays out. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I mean, part of the thing I want to talk about later is, you know, who, who's got the advantage of that quarterback position? It's, uh, My opinion I don't might it's... be different from, from the popular one. I don't think it's a definitive answer, at the very least. I think that you could go a couple of ways with that. And uh, we're going to get Teddy Savransky's thoughts on these guys, too. You can find him on Twitter, at Teddy underscore covers. He is a professional sports better. You can find his work over at sportsmemo.com. We're previewing the national championship, uh, talking LSU Clemson. We're going to get his read on a couple of prop bets. We're going to talk the spread. We're going to talk the total. Everything about this game, Teddy will be breaking down with us. Now, this is a two-podcast week once again because I also have one coming up tomorrow with Chris Andrews. We're going to break down his thoughts on the divisional round of the NFL playoffs, getting his thoughts on all four games and where he sees some value, and talking about a book that he released back in June, I believe, and uh, just talk in general about Chris Andrews' path. Uh, Ed, I know you had Chris on your podcast recently. Yep. I'm pretty excited to talk to him. It should be a fun conversation, too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, bookmakers have a unique perspective, uh, as John Sheeran did la on our last show. Uh, mm -hmm. It's always good to talk to them and, uh, you know, cross your fingers and hope you're on the same side that they are. And I was reading about the book, the good ones. and it just sounds yeah. like a really fun backstory. So I'm excited to, to talk to Chris tomorrow. To get that podcast right as it is posted, make sure you subscribe to Covering the Spread on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts, you can find us there. And if you're listening to Apple Podcasts, we would appreciate a rating and review as well, because those do help us out a ton, and uh, it's been fun along this first season of covering the spread thus far. Now, before we bring in Teddy to talk about the national championship, we got to go back through the bowl season and the semifinals and break down our bets for college football during that time. Let's do that first and then talk to Teddy about Monday's game. Covering the past. All right, let's take a look back at the bets we had here for college football bowl season, starting off with a couple, Ed, um, starting off with Miami against Louisiana Tech. <laughs> It was <laughs> Miami by six and a half at the time, and it was one of those games where one team clearly did not come to play, and right. it's hard for numbers to quantify that. Um, just yeah. kind of a weird game overall. Yeah. I, I mean, I think there, there there was a talent disparity on that field. Unfortunately, uh, that did not make itself uh, uh, present. I think I kind of talked about that game early in my process. Yeah. Uh, did not end up actually going with Miami uh, ATS and that. So I uh, feel a little fortunate there, even though I did, d even though the numbers did like it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, not, you know, not one, of, <laughs> not one of the best calls for the numbers there. It's just hard to know when a team is going to totally no show. And maybe you could have predicted it because it's Miami in a, in a non-important bowl game, but this Miami team kind of felt different, I guess, in the sense that 
they aren't like yeah. some top tier program in some scrub right. bowl. So I guess for me, well, I was pretty okay with it. It just you know, didn't I mean, that, work out. Yeah, it, did, it didn't work out. I mean, that, that's the bottom line. I mean, the numbers did like them as the second best ACC team. When you looked at data from this year, obviously way, way below Clemson, but you know, better than all the other teams there. Uh, lost a bunch of tough games this year uh, that they could have won. And you would think with a first year coach that they would be pretty fired up to to get into bowl season and and make a statement, even if it is against the conference USA team. None of that happened. No. <laughs> but we'll talk more about Miami next year. Uh, so the other one was Washington State plus three against Air Force. You had this bet for a very long time. Uh, it was they were covering for most of the game. You did get actually a half uh, point of line movement in your favor too. It closed at two and a half. Air Force played really well. Uh, they were up by three deep into the fourth quarter, but they scored a touchdown with 350 left. Washington State couldn't quite score to get it back down to three, but that was one of those where the bet could have gone either way. It just didn't go in your favor at the end. Yeah, and and I, and I knew that uh, that Air Force would be able to score on Washington State. You just kind of hope that they do it slowly enough or, or you get a critical fumble. Right, right. Also, Washington State had a really good first drive, uh, went for it on fourth and goal from the one, didn't work out. Um, so, um, you know, I don't, I don't think it was a bad call, uh, yeah, but I agree. It, it didn't work out. Yeah, and it was a fun game to watch, too. I, lo- I love what you talked about in your bet, too, is the contrasting styles, and that was uh, it led yeah. to a really fun game there, too. Uh, moving to the semifinals, I got buried on LSU Oklahoma. I wanted the under at 76 points, and LSU scored 63 by themselves. They were at 49 at halftime. Whoops. Uh, that one yeah. was not well. good. Uh, <laughs> that just, I, like, immediately when that game started, it was like, oh, I've made a grave error. Yeah. Well, you know, um, Oklahoma's defense was top 25 when adjusting success rate going into that game. Not something I really talked about because I was still kind of obsessed on the other side of the ball and right. whether their scheme had changed and made them less explosive with, with Jalen Hurts running the ball. Turned out that didn't even matter. Um, so, and uh, yeah, it didn't go your way. And one of the reasons I wanted the under was because I thought LSU would pull away and they wouldn't need to score much in the second half. They didn't need to score much in the second half, but they scored <laughs> so much in the first half, it didn't matter. So, oh well. Uh, in the other game, we had uh, Ohio State plus two. You had Ohio State plus two against Clemson. There were a couple situations where that could have worked. Obviously, again, that one did not work. Clemson won by five, but had uh, that fumble recovery touchdown not been overturned or had Chris Olave not broken off his route, there were two separate ways you could have covered that bet. Neither of them sure. happened, though. So, like, yeah, it's just uh, that was a tough one. Yeah, no, for sure, too. And, I mean, it was kind of the first time LSU, uh, LSU, Ohio State had kind of shot themselves in the foot. Yeah. You know, they had a screen pass in the first half that looked perfect, and Dobbins just dropped the ball, mm-hmm. uh, kicked a bunch of field goals in that game. So, you know, I think uh, the markets were a little bit high on Clemson in that one. Um, and, yeah, I think I, I think it's, it was still the right side. You watch the replay of the Alave play uh, where Fields threw the pick. It's like he would have been open, too. Uh, and that just like that stung. It's, I love Justin Fields, so like anything that taints his stats or makes him look worse makes me sad personally. Even if I didn't, that one didn't hurt me because I had the under on that game at sixty three points. And that one did that one did pay off. But like mm-hmm. I'm still a Justin Fields fan, and I really wanted that to pay off. Uh, didn't quite work out, but regardless, Clemson wins. They advance, and now they are facing LSU. So kind of a tough string for us uh, with the bowls and the semifinals. But hey. We got one more game, Ed. We can bounce back in a big way with LSU versus Clemson, so let's do it there. Sounds good. All right. We'll bring in Teddy Covers to break down his thoughts on that game here in just one second. Again, follow him on Twitter at Teddy underscore Covers and find his work over at SportsMemo.com. But if you want to get in on the action, check out FanDuel Sportsbook and place your first bet today. If you lose, FanDuel will give you a refund of up to $500 in site credit. Visit sportsbook.fanduel.com for more details. Terms and conditions apply. Must be 21 plus and physically present in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, West Virginia, or Indiana. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Let's bring Teddy Savransky right now then to break down LSU versus Clemson, get his thought on all the different numbers you can get for that national championship and see where he is leaning for LSU versus Clemson. Covering the present. 
Let's bring Teddy Savransky back into covering the spread. Teddy covers over from Sports Memo. Teddy, really appreciate you swinging by for today. How are you doing? I'm doing just fine, thanks. Are you kidding? I mean, this is a fun time of year. It really is, you know. Yeah, most of bowl season behind us, but we still got one pretty big game in college football to enjoy. We got NFL playoffs. We have NBA. We have college hoops on center stage right now. So uh, it's a time of year I like. Uh, so for whatever for whatever that's worth. And the holidays are finally behind. I felt like it was endless this year. Uh, I, 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 I don't miss that being over. But it's a busy time of year for you because you're doing NBA stuff. Uh, you're doing some college hoops stuff. You got NFL playoffs. How do you balance uh, trying to juggle all those sports at once? I have no work-life balance whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, I'll be honest. I don't, you know, uh, once in a while, <laughs> every once in a while, I go do something with the boy or I'll, uh, you know, I, I can't remember last time I took my wife out on a date. Uh, uh, I'm sure I'm due. I'm sure she remembers. Right. Uh, but, you know, I take time to breathe in the summer. Okay. And during, from the beginning of the start of college, really from the beginning of August, Till the end of March Madness, you work, and that's just how it is. Uh, and I'm 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 kind of used to that now. Uh, I've been doing it long enough that I'm that I'm used to the rhythm. But uh, there's no question. It's not a in terms of work life balance. It's you know as a as a better sometimes you miss that. <laughs> but I wouldn't know <laughs> what to do good. with myself. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Teddy, we always appreciate your insights. Uh, we had a little time to reflect on the college football regular season and actually most of bowl season. Give us a sense for what went well for you and what you're thinking about differently maybe for this last game and for next season. Well, in terms of the overall campaign, I would describe my college football season as mediocre at best. You know, I I didn't crush anything. I didn't get crushed. Uh, I haven't gone through yet game by game. What what I'll do uh, in the Austin, we talk about what what happens come summertime. In summertime, I literally go through game by game uh, in every sport that I've done and try to find patterns. I'll do a little bit of D-base research, uh, see if there's areas where I struggled or where I was particularly uh, successful. Um, if I'm looking if I, looking back at the season, I, I almost feel like there were, I didn't fully take advantage of some of the stuff, uh, some of the opportunities that were in front of me. I saw Minnesota early. I didn't make nearly enough money off the Gophers. You know, and there were a handful of teams like that. I saw Cincinnati. I don't feel I made enough money off the Bearcats. And I saw them in September as being a bet on team. Uh, You know, after that Ohio State loss, they were bet on for, you know, two months. Uh, So I feel like there were a good handful of teams that I saw and should have made more money with. Mm -hmm. But in terms of a broad, thorough review, that doesn't come till over the summer. And so you're going through each individual game and trying to figure out opportunities missed and what may have gone wrong with, with bets that you may have missed. You're going game by game for all of those. After I, I go through every bet that I made. Wow. And again, I'm not spending three hours with every sure. bet that I made, but I'm going to, I absolutely look for patterns. Yeah. And look for areas of success and well, you know, leaks. <laughs> uh, I mean, when we talk about one of the biggest differences between guys that do this full time and guys that do this recreationally is guys that do this full time. You have to see your leaks, find your leaks and plug your leaks because we all have them. Um, right. And uh, recreational betters don't necessarily always do that. Right. Uh, yeah. And I think the self-awareness question is important, too, when we're talking about this national championship game between LSU and Clemson. You know, you have to know where your strength is when there are you know, a more robust variety of markets to enter for a big game than there are for your general college football week. So when you're looking at a game, like a national championship game, that is pretty heavily bet on, are there markets you tend to find to be more attractive where you do better, or are they all efficient enough where it's not something where you tend to dive too heavily into games like this? So in my mind, the national championship game and the Super Bowl are very different. Okay. In the Super Bowl... I go pretty heavy on the props. I do because there's a lot of stuff that I've done for a number of years that tends to work and you have a lot of positive expectation situations. And then as you come in in on on kickoff Sunday, there are all kinds of positive expectation situations because uh, there's been uh, an extraordinary amount of public money betting the props for the Super Bowl. The props for the national champion game, I mean, Compared to what we have in the Super Bowl, there's nothing out there right now. We have quarterback props to talk about. We have adjusted team totals, you know, and we'll see a handful more. But we're not going to see the bevy 
you know, 400 props for this. And we're not going to see the chances for missed by markets. And we're not going to see the extraordinary flow of money that comes in for this, like, like Super Bowl props do. So I view this game like I would view any game in college football. It's no, uh, in terms of my wager size, I mean, you know, I, I did make one bet on this game. And I, I may have made it too early, uh, but I bet it. Uh, you know, and, uh, we'll talk about it in just a minute. But that's all I bet. I bet one unit on this game, okay? And when it comes to props, I mean, we could talk about them. I looked at them, uh, but I haven't bet anything yet. And if I do get involved with the prop, again, my max, max possible exposure in this game is going to be like two, two and a half units, okay? Yeah. Uh, it's not a situation where like Super Bowl where you can easily have five units uh, plus uh, when you count all the prop wagers that you've made. So, um I guess what I'm saying is that I, I'm not I'm not going nuts on this game, and I would encourage any of you out there not to go nuts. It's one freaking game, and you know what? There aren't a whole lot of mistakes you're going to find at this time of the year. Where you're like, oh, that's a really bad line. Oh, that's a terrible total. Oh, how could they have that prop here? You're, you're, they're, they're, sometimes you see that stuff in September, in October, in November. You don't see it in the national championship game. So you know, it's a, a, a some action, some fun. Uh, I think a positive expectation wager on the side. Uh, and other than that, it's just another game. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. Well, I definitely want to hear what you got to say about the side, but maybe let's start with the total. Uh, 69 and a half. Um, LSU uh, was obviously fantastic in the semifinal uh, against Oklahoma. Gets a little bit more difficult against Clemson, but, you know, is the market overacting a little bit to LSU's semifinal performance with uh, 69 and a half points here? So we have to talk about what Oklahoma did on the defensive side of the football. Okay. okay. Wait, which wait, is they not do anything. <laughs> which is not. And again, first year, first time defensive coordinator who literally did not, I did not notice an adjustment during the game. They started with a bad defensive game plan and they played that same defensive game plan for 60 minutes. And uh, you know, the, the results, with a Heisman winning quarterback and an uh, elite receiving core were what you might expect given the fact that the defense was outclassed and made no adjustments whatsoever throughout the course of the game and the coordinator had no idea what he was doing. Okay. Clemson ain't Oklahoma. <laughs> All right. That's, that, I mean, if, if you're going to talk about uh, this game in, in one sentence, that's my sentence. Three words Clemson ain't Oklahoma. The look ahead line here was one. Okay. Clemson minus or LSU minus one, and then Clemson looks really good or uh, uh, LSU looks really good, and Clemson. And again, look, I had a bet on Ohio State in that game. Receiver turns the wrong yep. way, or else maybe I win that bet. But my thought process going into that game was whoever wins this game, I'm betting against LSU, and am I? And nothing that I saw changed my opinion about that. Right. All right, I understand that the Tigers have been truly elite this season, the LSU Tigers. On the other hand, I've seen Clemson take care of some pretty truly elite SEC teams in national championship games past, and I don't think that Burrow's going to have the same level of success in this game as he had in the last game. Two very different quality defenses, two very different defenses. Brent Venables, man, you, uh, you say, why is he the highest? Or I think he's the second highest paid coordinator now. But why is he the second highest coordinator, paid coordinator in college football? Because he earned it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he gets it done every year. I mean, isn't uh, Aranda? It's, it's a very different defense here than, the, than what they just faced. So, uh, again, I'll look ahead at plus one. My powering number, I, I didn't change my powering number for either team. And now I, I'm, I catch plus six? Yeah, I'm interested. Yeah. And I think that... One thing that you talk about, Teddy, we talked about this when we had you on back in, I think it was September, is how you want to find areas where the numbers aren't going to fully encapsulate the way a team is currently playing. And when you look at full season numbers for Clemson, it includes September. And there was some talk about Trevor Lawrence having a shoulder injury back then. We know Dabo likes to get his guys in in non-conference play. Is Clemson a team you view as being undervalued based on their full season numbers, potentially leading to this line of uh, plus five and a half? Modestly. Mm. Modestly. Because, again, the, the, the September numbers by now aren't fully factored in the equation the way right. – uh, the, and they were so good in October and November uh, that a, a lot of that got – you know, the, the, 
the, the 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 sweet spot for Clemson was after that North Carolina game, you know, where they got tested and they came back and where they covered six of their next seven. Um, you know, they were clearly an undervalued commodity in the market at that point. I'm not convinced that's the case here, but I do think Ellis, he was a little bit overvalued in the markets. You know, again, j- based on a giant, they've, LSU's been impressive as hell. Okay. I'm not saying LSU's bad. Uh, okay. Uh, right. But when you kill Georgia and then you kill Oklahoma in your last two games and in big national TV, highly publicized affairs, it's it's hard for me to picture LSU being anything but overvalued after those type of victories. So let's talk about that in relation to the spread. We got five and a half here at FanDuel Sportsbook. You've alluded to this a couple of times where maybe you're thinking Clemson. Do you think at five and a half, Clemson is a good bet? I think you mentioned you may have gotten this number earlier as well. Yeah, I, I, I put six in my pocket. And look, let's be honest. Um, you can find sixes right now. Um, they're out there. Right. Uh, and you and I and I encourage every look when it comes to sports books and they're sponsoring. Okay, you guys are sponsored by FanDuel. Everybody should open up an account at FanDuel. Okay, <laughs> every single person watching this show right. who is eligible to bet should click on whatever link you have and open up an account right now and take advantage of the bonus offers because you want every sports book you can get. Shop. Okay, it's not one. If you have a thousand dollar bankroll, split it in half. And put half here, have it, or split it in quarters and put 250 in four different, or split it into 10 and put a hundred dollars into 10 books. Every offer, take advantage of it. Yep. Take get a FanDuel account literally today. Don't wait around, do it right now. Give these guys what they need to keep the show going. But that doesn't mean it's the only place you should be betting. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there are plus sixes available right now. If FanDuel is hanging a five and a half, find a six somewhere. If you have 10 accounts, You'll always find that number. If you have four accounts, you'll usually find that number. If you have two accounts, you have more of a chance of finding that number than you do if you only have one. Um, and that's the truth of it. Yeah. So, uh, and I didn't, I, Ed asked me about the total. I never even mentioned it. And you asked me about the side. I never even mentioned it. I'm getting off, off track here. So, no, that's, no, uh, no, no, that's, that's actually good, Teddy. Um, you did mention a little earlier that said maybe you want to wait if you're taking Clemson uh, on the side. You think this might get to uh, six and a half, maybe even seven? Yes. I don't necessarily think there's a rush. Okay. Um, the 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 public clearly likes the team that just destroyed their opponent as opposed to the team that didn't play their best game and got lucky to beat their opponent. And that's just the nature of what we do. And for a single event game like this, with all the prep time, I would not be shocked at all to see at some books. LSU laying six and a half before kickoff, maybe even a seven popping up. I wouldn't be shocked. Not at every book, not in the broader market, but will the books that cater to recreational betters hang a six and a half? Will you shop around? I think you'll find one. I think maybe you'll find more than one. And who knows what it does on game day. So I I feel like I may have locked in a little early uh, on that. You asked me about the total and I didn't even mention it. Um, And I want to talk about the only way I could bet this is under. Okay simply because of what LSU did against a defense that didn't show up and didn't make adjustments. Now they're facing a real defense and LSU's defense is pretty good too. (laughs) You know, you need 10 touchdowns to beat you. If I have to play the total, I can only play it under all that said, do you really want to spend the entire night of the national championship game going, (laughs) Oh my God. And rooting for, I mean, it's a hard route, man. It makes, it takes the fun out of it. Yeah. Uh, and if it, if it's a fun wager for you, there ain't no fun betting unders. No. <laughs> you no. Know, it's all right. Come kick. Slow it down. Slow it down. You know. And in hoops, I, and I I can make a joke out of it. You're like, all right, brick, brick. All right, slow it down. Slow it down. You know. Uh, I say that over and over again for 48 minutes. But in, in football, you know, with these, with the level of explosiveness of these offense, it's a tough under to sweat. Yeah. Uh, again, if it's profitable, you do it anyway. Is it extraordinarily profitable? Is this like, oh, yeah, this is a 60% one? No, I don't know if it's a 60% under, you know? Yeah. So, Teddy, uh, lean we were, under, I have not pulled the trigger. We were talking about shopping. How high would this number need to be at whatever book you can find it in order for you to actually pull the trigger on the under? Are we talking like 71, 72, somewhere in there? Or does it need to get a little bit higher even? I mean, <sighs> It was certainly, I, I would think, in terms of a buy, a, a strike price, 
71 and a half stands out to me. Okay. Uh, I haven't done any work on that. That's just off the top of my head. Sure. Uh, but it, 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 it's a strike price that makes sense to me. Uh, but it, I, I don't even know if I do it at that number. It might, it might end up being like a 72 and a half or a, I'm waiting until right before kickoff or maybe I'm waiting until five minutes after kickoff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, somebody, you know, but then of course you're all, you, the only way you can get there uh, with an under, if you're, somebody scores a quick touchdown early. I probably don't do if, if I get involved with the total, I'll probably do it before kickoff. Uh, but yeah, 71 and a half, 72, somewhere in that range. Excellent. Um, so we have a couple player props for this game, uh, passing yardage totals for Joe Burrow and Trevor Lawrence. Burrow is at 365 and a half and Lawrence is at 295 and a half. Any interest for you, Teddy? So. Give me Burrow's number again. 365.5. So he went over that, you know, not regularly. <laughs> at 493 uh, was, against Oklahoma. Less than half. Yeah. He had 49 against Ole Miss. The Alabama game, well, remember, Bama got in the 40s. He had 393. He had 398 against Vandy and 471 against Texas. I'm not playing him over that number. I'll tell you that. Okay. Right. When you look at the defenses that he was able to do that against, none of them were Clemson's caliber. We lean under in this game to begin with, and that is one high. That's as high. I mean, I can't recall one higher. No. You remember seeing a, a quarterback prop higher than this? Either one of you guys? No. <laughs> I mean, ever. You know, so uh, with the highest number I've ever seen, I can only play it on. Yeah, I think that's the right play, too. And I'm going to talk about that later in the show, too, because I think the under there is – Viable, not only because of the strength of the defense, but you just need so many things to go in his favor. There are different gain script possibilities that can lead to an under there. Sure. Uh, there is a strength of the defense. There are a lot of paths to that number going under. I think that's kind of the way I want to view things, is how many different ways can I get to the under here? And for Burrow, under 365.5, I see several different ways to get there. Well, exactly. I mean, if, if LSU is in control of the game, Burrow ain't going over. Right. Okay. If LSU isn't moving the football appropriately in the first half, Burrow ain't going over. I mean, there's I, I totally see what you're saying. I agree with that assessment 100%. There's, there's more game scenarios that favor an under than an over for this one. There's only one game scenario that favors an over, and that's if this is a true shootout. Right. Um, and Clemson's defense can't get any stops. Right. Which is possible. Sure. But I, I'm not going to bet on that. I, there, I, I agree that there's more, uh, more chances for under than over. For yeah, sure. Percentage-wise, the under is, I think, the more advantageous way there. Uh, anything else you see related to this game? It can be a bet that you see at FanDuel Sportsbook or somewhere else, or even just insights on this game that you may have based on the research you've done in these two teams throughout the year. Anything else you want to mention before uh, we send you on your way? Well, I mean, so I, I, was, I went through the uh, FanDuel props this morning. I appreciate uh, and went through them one by one. And, uh, you know, I'm like, well, we could look at these team totals. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and again uh, – I wouldn't be surprised if those numbers move. Because, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, 37 and a half for LSU, you know, I, I'd love to bet under 38. <laughs> you know, will we see it? I don't know. Uh, uh, I'd love to bet under 38 and a half. That's a true strike price number. I don't think we see that. But that uh, was one that at least stood out to me a little bit. Yeah. Uh, that I haven't bet, but uh, I will. is absolutely under consideration uh, as, we, uh, as we approach uh, the weekend before kickoff. So you've got your feelers out there monitoring things and see where the market goes. I think that's a great discussion to have, Teddy. So really appreciate you coming on here and talking about the value of shopping, uh, looking for the best lines you can get, and uh, getting us set for the national championship. So I, I want to thank you once again, Teddy. Fun conversation once again, as always. Appreciate it. And uh, have fun watching the game. Hopefully you can sit back and relax a bit uh, during it as well. We appreciate it. Hey, the pleasure is all mine, and I appreciate you guys not giving me grief about my – the Cleveland Browns are going to be good prediction uh, that we had uh, back. You were not alone in that one, Teddy. <laughs> yeah, I know. But uh, <laughs> nonetheless, it came out of my mouth. It was well, not Teddy, correct I mean, information. So. After the show, you, 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 your claim was like, you know, it's the most talented uh, roster out there. And my thought after the show, I didn't mention it on the show. I was like, well, what about Philadelphia? That's what I said, yeah. And, and that, that didn't look. <laughs> That, that doesn't look so great either, Teddy. So, um, <laughs> hey, guess what? None of us is perfect in our predictions. So We're, uh, we're we, trying. <laughs> we're trying. Hey, um, you know what, Teddy, though? We got to run it back next year. Baker year three. Let's try it again then. Why not? <laughs> uh, so I would expect the Browns to have one of the more talented rosters heading into next season as well. We'll see what, what the coaches are doing. What could go wrong? <laughs> well, thank you, Teddy. We appreciate that. Hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. 
Cheers, guys. Good luck this weekend and good luck in the championship game. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having me. Covering the future. One big thank you once again to Teddy Covers, Teddy Savransky for swinging on by. Find him on Twitter at Teddy underscore Covers. And again, find his work over at SportsMemo.com. And Teddy was talking about searching for the best value in betting on games. Hey, what do you know? Let's talk a little odds fire because you can do exactly that by going to oddsfire.com, comparing odds, trying to find the best value, and even examining first party fan duel data all in one place. You can try to identify when the line may move one way or another, decide if you want to dive in, kind of like Teddy was talking about. Do I hold off until Monday or how do you want to play that? Never settle. Always get the best odds. Check out the experience for free now on NumberFire or at OddsFire.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. It's as if Teddy was doing the read for me. So thank you to Teddy for that. But uh, a lot of good insights for that game, Ed. And I think that it's uh, I think that his discussion around LSU and having those two big wins. Because the SEC championship game, remember, was basically yeah. like a play-in game for Georgia. If yeah. they won that game, they'd be in the cha- they'd be in the playoff. And that was a high-profile, nationally televised game. So it was a semifinal, obviously. And I think it's important to identify when teams are in those spots because it could lead to value in betting against them, which we may see with LSU here. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's over-exuberance on with LSU, uh, in particular on the offensive side of the ball. You know, for the total, my number is 66 and a half. Uh, definitely suggests the under. And I think kind of the, the narrative around the game and, and what we expect from the public – Uh, certainly sports that absolutely so let's dive in here to covering the future and talk more about this game we both want to talk about an angle in this game ed you were talking about the spread in this game which way is your are your numbers is pushing you for this one yeah so my my numbers are a combination of of a number of things uh they actually when when i put them together they they like clemson by a half point I was a little bit surprised. Um, You know, they actually had LSU slightly ahead of Clemson before the game. But, you know, I I mean, they were a top three team in college football this year, and they were the top three seeds, and and one of them's obviously gone. And and I think, like, these teams are all really close. Uh, There's two different metrics that are kind of the primary thing that go into uh, my model. Uh, First is markets uh, to take closing – point spreads and adjust for strength the schedule to get my market rankings. And, and they actually like Clemson quite a bit um, by six points. Uh, that is something, you know, that's a lot of their performance towards the end of the year when they were really blowing teams out. Um, and also, uh, you know, earlier in the season as well, when we expected this to be the best team in the nation after, you know, blowing out Alabama in the championship game last year as well. Um, the other big part is just data from the current season. So this is, based on points, based on success rate, based on uh, yards per play, all adjusted for strength of schedule. And here's where LSU excels. But even with the data from this year, uh, LSU would be predicted to be about a four and a half point favorite in this game. So even if you just look at the the part of the model that likes LSU the most, um, it it's, it's pointing to Clemson plus five and a half. And I definitely, I, I think this should be a very close game. Um, Let's just step back and take a little bit of a broader view. You opened the show. You talked about Joe Burrow versus Trevor Lawrence. You know, who has the advantage? Um, I'm going to give the advantage to Trevor Lawrence. Uh, This wouldn't even been a question at the beginning of the year. Joe Burrow's obviously had a great season, won the Heisman. Lawrence has had his struggles. Um, But I I think if both of these guys were in the NFL draft, I think Lawrence would would get picked uh, ahead of Burrow right now, you know, partially just because, you know, there's just less of a good sample for, for Joe Burrow at this point. Um, defenses. Uh, I think these are the two best coordinators in the business, multiple NFL picks on, on that side of the ball. When you look at the numbers, it's, it's kind of a push, right? These are both top, top five units. We can look at receivers also NFL guys on, on both teams, maybe give a slight edge to LSU because they're, they're going to have two guys that are, that are going to be picked um, at running back, maybe slight edge to Clemson. Uh, Travis Etienne is, is going to be a top uh, first round, maybe second round pick. So kind of when you put it together and, and if you made me pick a side, I think I would lean slightly towards LSU um, just kind of waiting their performance this year a little bit more, but I, I mean, I, I I think this is going to be a close game. Uh, I think it's going to come down to the end. Maybe a field goal uh, flips the margin towards the end. So I, I definitely like Clemson plus five and a half, plus six. You know, yeah. maybe even maybe even a little bit more. Yeah, and I was rewatch. I think the closest analog to this game is the 
LSU Alabama game. And I think when you think about that game, it's easy to remember that LSU is up 33 to 13 at one point. They are wiping Alabama, but even with that, Alabama kept on clawing back. They were never out of that game. I was watching because I was trying to watch Tua Tunga Vailoa for like draft stuff, but like, and Tua's biggest, the biggest criticism around Tua is his arm strength, which is not a criticism for, uh, for Trevor Lawrence, but Tua was launching nukes down the field and connecting and right. his receivers were getting open. And you could say, well, that's Jerry Judy. That's, that's Henry Ruggs. Like these Devonte Smith, these are amazing players. It's hard to, you know, replicate that. But Clemson's wide receivers are pretty freaking good too. So yeah. if we're going to see one team that is able to move the ball on LSU's defense and potentially cover a five and a half point spread, it's going to be Clemson, given the talent they have at quarterback and wide receivers. So I think that backs up your point about Clemson plus five and a half, you know, just being a bit optimistic about LSU overall. Yeah. And, and in that Alabama game, you remember they made a ton of mistakes in the first Tua dropped half. the ball, yeah, just uh, dropped, just dropped ball. it. Uh, it. He was playing on a sprained it. ankle. He had like yeah. that that heavy wrap on it on his right leg. Um, yeah, it was a wild it, game. It was his first game back, I think. Yeah, well, because he rushed back because he had that surgery, um, and he right like, after the fumble, he was awesome, and he was just shredding this defense. And I think that right. like that game actually made me view Tua more optimistically. But it also made me right. more optimistic about Clemson's offense being able to score points here. Right. And I think yeah, that, I mean, yeah, it should be fun. I don't know if that makes you like the over, <laughs> given the similarities of that game. That's um. very true. <laughs> I'm not going to go with the over, though. I am going to go and talk about Joe Burrow. You know, we talked about Joe Burrow with relation to the spread, but I think he's relevant, too, because as we we're talking about Teddy, that passing prop is really freaking high at 36 and, or 365.5 passing yards. And... He did go over that number by 128 yards in the semifinal. I believe he was like there at halftime. But as mentioned with Teddy, there are so many things that need to go right to hit a prop that is that high because or Clemson cannot get too big of a lead because then they'll be able to coast. Uh, Edwards Hilaire should be healthier, healthier for this game, so they should be able to run the ball more. But you also can't get too far behind because if you're too far behind, then – LSU's or Clemson's going to know that you're passing and that's going to drop your efficiency. So there are two paths to failure there. If Clemson gets too big of a lead or if LSU gets too big of a lead or if they fall behind too much, Joe Burrow's probably not going to hit this number. And that's before we even talk about the strength of the defense he's facing. Clemson ranks third in defensive SP plus, according to uh, Bill Connolly and ESPN. That is the second best defense that Burrow has faced this year. And we have a pretty good sample on Joe Burrow against good defenses. We can kind of dig in there and see what he's done against them. And he's faced five defenses ranked in the top 25 by SP+. And he was very good in those games. But his yards per attempt went down to 9.76 in that split. He averaged 341.6 passing yards per game. He was under 365.5 in four of those five games. So if you're looking at like 9.76 yards per attempt, he would need 38 attempts to go over (laughs) 365.5. And that's that's kind of a lot. Um, It's also a lot to expect him to average 9.76 yards per attempt against a Brett Venables defense. He did play three pretty tight games. I think that the one area in which he could go over this is if it's like Teddy said, it's like a pure shootout. He did have three tight games in there against top 25 uh, defenses, the Alabama game, the Auburn game, and the Florida game. He had 393 against Alabama, 321 against Auburn, and 293 against Florida. So I think that he will do well against his defense. I don't think Joe Burrow is going to struggle, but you need to be so good in order to hit 365 and a half against a defense like this, where I think it's just a bit overinflated. I love Joe Burrow. I think he'll be a very good NFL quarterback. He'll be very good in this game. But 365 and a half is a really big number. Now, because this is a national championship game, there's a lot of juice here. It's minus 112. Uh, It's minus 112 on both sides. So you're kind of hoping that you get a little bit of wiggle room there. Uh, You're not getting, I would say, the best number. But I think it's very worthwhile with the number itself being so high at 365 and a half. So I want to take the under on that one. 
I was tempted by the Trevor Lawrence over, given what we saw by by Tua in the Alabama game, but I think the more advantageous number between the two is to go under on Joe Burrow at 365.5. And kind of like Teddy said, it's a bummer to root against someone as fun as Joe Burrow. And uh, I had that same issue with Russell Wilson earlier this year where I was like, I bet an under on a Seahawks game. And I was like, I kind of want to watch some Russell magic, but I also really don't. Uh, so there is that to consider, but I would go with the under on that one. Yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense in terms of just the over-exuberance argument uh, for LSU and their offense in particular. Yeah, and uh, again, you're rooting against Joe Burrow, but like he can still be really good and not th- hit 365 and a half, so you should be able to enjoy this football game. Uh, that is all we have for the national championship side of things. Ed, any final thoughts for you on Clemson LSU? I think I laid them all out, actually. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's going to be a good game. I think it's going to be tight, and I'm just excited to be a fan and, and, and watch it. Sit back, relax, enjoy some football, and hopefully a tight ball game and tight enough to cover five and a half as well for Clemson. Uh, what do you have going on this week for you over at the Power Rank and the Football Analytics Show? Yeah, I was excited to have J.J. Zacharyson on the Football Analytics Show. My um, boss. <laughs> Very important guy. I think I introduced him as a content guru yes. at FanDuel, which I think is the most appropriate yep. uh, title for his, you know, his varied uh, roles. Uh, part of what I did for prep uh, for that podcast was to go back and watch our very first episode of, yeah. of covering the spread and a couple things. So first of all, I'm looking down the entire damn episode. So it's like, <laughs> there's, there's like so much, my forehead is like, entirely in the screen so (laughs) i actually remember going back after the first show and looking at that and being like oh all right i need to fix that (laughs) but secondly i went back and we had kind of talked about how he had seen value in derrick henry to win the rushing title in the nfl i think the thing that we didn't mention was that he also saw value in nick chubb to win that rushing title and he was yeah he was the guy that had had second so um when we did that episode, I remember thinking how much that I appreciated that JJ runs his own numbers and is very thoughtful about that. Not just a content guru, he's actually an analytics guru too, in terms of doing those fantasy football numbers. So we talked about that a little bit. We talked about some stats that are uh, that he looks for in college running backs that you probably be surprised at for projecting uh, NFL uh, performance. And then obviously we talked about the divisional game. So uh, it was a lot of fun talking to him. Yeah, and you were talking about his process with regards to projections. I talked to him enough to know what his process is, and it gives you a greater respect for it once you know more about it. I And, right. like, I trust JJ's numbers a lot because I know the way he goes about getting them, and the way he goes about getting them is the right way to do so. Um, so JJ is someone who, obviously, I have to respect because he's my boss, but I would, independent <laughs> of that, too, because, like, he does things the right way in terms of trying to generate his numbers, trying to take... Uh, as much information as he can and going about it in the right way, which I think is, is super valuable. So I'll have to go check that out and make sure I, I don't get fired mid podcast. We'll see. <laughs> you can find that yeah. over at the football analytics show. And uh, yeah, listening back to what JJ said was uh, pretty incredible for that first episode. So follow him on Twitter as well at late round QB. Find all of Ed's work over at the power The podcast is a football analytics show uh, and find Ed on Twitter at the power rank. I am at Jim Sonis, J I M S A N N E S. You can also follow the FanDuel podcast network at FanDuel podcast. Big thank you to Calvin Theobald, our video producer for running the video side of things for today. Thank you, Cal, as always. And a thank you to Teddy Savransky. Follow him on Twitter at Teddy underscore covers. Get his thoughts, whether it be NBA, college hoops, NFL, college football, whatever it may be. Teddy's got a lot of good thoughts that you can find there and at sportsmemo.com. Hope you all enjoyed the episode for today. Good luck with your bets for the college football national championship. Hopefully things go well and you have a good time watching some awesome football Monday night. Back again tomorrow with Chris Andrews to break down the NFL divisional round. Make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread to get that right as it is up. We'll talk to you then. This has been Covering the Spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. <laughs>